Welcome, all of them. This is gonna be a really cool video because I've not heard anyone else speak about it, uh, but the top Christian Vikings. And it's gonna be interesting for those of you just interested in Viking history because I'm gonna go over some very famous events and battles for you. But it's cool for you guys interested in the Norse religion too because you're gonna learn a little bit about the conversion of the Norse and the attitude towards Christianity from the pagans at the time. Because I see a lot of negative things in the comments section of my videos about Christians, um, but I have nothing against Christians. I don't care what religion or heritage you have. If you're a good person, I have love and respect for you. That being said, Christians a thousand years ago were not good people. They did some very cruel and horrible things to others who just didn't agree with their worldview. Especially in the north of Europe this happened. But not all of them were bad and that's what this video is about. The top five Christian Vikings that were our greatest heroes. And also I thought I'd give you guys a little game to play. Comment below your favorite king of the Viking Age. The one who gets the most votes. I will do a video on that king. Try not to pick Young Nud because the sources are difficult on him and that video is going to take hours to do and it's just, we're not sure he's actually just one person, we think he's many. So I prefer if you guys would vote for some other king other than the Ragnar. But anyway, put your votes down below in the comments, I'll give it a week and the king with the most votes I will do a full video on. Anyway, to the video. Okay, so very important before I start, telling what someone's actual religion and beliefs were more than a thousand years ago is very hard to do. Just being baptized does not make you a Christian, as you're going to see in a minute when I speak about that. Many Vikings were baptized, but they clearly didn't take it seriously, so the ones that I'm going over now are listing them, the ones that we have pretty good evidence that they adopted the Christian beliefs and lifestyle and took it seriously for at least a good chunk of their life. Now, there is a clear number one and two in this list. Not even debatable, those are the ones I'm gonna get to. But number three, four, and five, there can be some arguments for either of these and even more. Um, this is just how I put them, my opinions, but definitely it's open for all your ideas. Let us know in the comments. Um, and don't say Olav Tryggvason, please. <laughs> Number five, I'm putting Rollo here. So most of you know the story of Rollo, although the Vikings TV series uh, gets a lot of things wrong, the general idea and storyline of Rollo was uh, pretty right. Uh, he was either from Norway or Denmark, some sources say different things, and he raided the hell out of northern France and he claimed land there. After some time, when the French King Charles actually fought back, Rollo decided he would take permanent residents there and have a legit legal claim to the land there, which is what we call Normandy. Now this is no easy feat. France at the time was one of the strongest parts of Europe and closest to the Holy Roman Empire and it got the most support. So Rillo and his men coming here, um, th they did not just sell themselves away as mercenaries like it showed in the show and they became servants of the French. Absolutely not. They took land with a mighty force and basically forced the French to have to negotiate with them. They were an extremely powerful force and became friends with the French just because they wanted to. But eventually Rollo was baptized and he took not one but two French Christian wives. One of them was the daughter of the French king. And I did a whole long video on the Rollo about exactly what the sources say about him. Uh, the question with these types of things is, was he really Christian? He definitely would have not stopped believing in pagan things, especially his men and his warriors would have um, uh, continued to believe in pagan things, but at least for the last 20-ish years of Rillo's life, the records really do seem like he did take the Christian religion seriously, took a Christian wife, established Christian law on the land, had his children baptized, and all of his descendants were devout Christians, even though uh, 150 years later we have records of uh, um, pagan magic being used by the Normans in their takeover of England. Watch my video about that. But yeah, there's enough evidence to say that Rollo was at least a practicing Christian for the last chunk of his life and he took it seriously, so that's why I categorize him here. Number four, Knut the Great. He was a Danish king. 
but he also ruled over Norway and was king of all England for almost 20 years. Uh, he was said to be trained by the Jumsby kings, and he was a great, great warrior. He eventually came to England and fought many hard battles, and he did take control and become king. Um, now, most of his rule in England was just to ensure that Danish settlers didn't get slaughtered, basically. It was a response to the St. Price's Day Massacre, where thousands of Danes were killed. Um, and um, a lot of uh, Svein and Knuts. Uh, rule over England was simply just to assure uh, safety for their people and also freedom uh, of religion in England. So Canute was definitely Christian, but like his father, he fought for religious freedom in Scandinavia and abroad. He even went on a trip to Rome to witness the crowning of the Holy Roman Emperor Conrad II, and he also was able to negotiate a reduction in the costs of the Pelham to be paid among his realms, and also he divided up the power between the archbishops in Bremen and Canterbury nearby. And he also wanted his pagan people of Denmark to stop being harassed on their travels, on trades around Europe. This is what Knut did. He secured basically peace for pagans traveling and trading around Europe. So Knut was for sure a Christian, uh, but he was able to take a diplomatic approach and also violent approaches when necessary to make sure that the pagans of Scandinavia were left in peace and not discriminated against. So this is what I talk about in my other videos about, you know, the Danes being kind of the more mature, older brother of Scandinavia. Norway and Sweden were pagan and they were not going to have anything else and they would fight till their last breath to keep their pagan religion. Um, but the Danes were a bit smarter about it and more diplomatic about it because they had been in conflict with the Saxons in Germany for hundreds of years and they had preferred the more peaceful solutions by now so a very great and powerful but also a smart and diplomatic king that Knut was. Number three, Harald Hardrada. Uh, a lot of people are surprised at this because he is one of the most famous Vikings that we have and people think that he's pagan just because of that, just because uh, you've heard about his deeds and the most famous battle of Stamford Bridge, which was supposed to be the last Viking stand and it marked the end of the Viking Age, but Harald Hydrada also went to the east and was with the Kievan Rus and served under the Eastern Roman Emperor in Constantinople. I did a full long video about his life, check that out. There are some people that say he was a pagan because of all that, but just because he raided and because he was a great warrior and invaded England, he definitely wasn't pagan. Uh, he was 100% Christian, as was his older brother, Olav, and the rest of his family. Uh, Olav the Saint, his older brother, was actually king of Norway and a very oppressive king, and he used his force to convert every pagan in the country, even in the smallest village he tried to. But the pagans eventually revolted and killed Olav at the Battle of Stikrestad and won back control of the country. So Olav's younger brother, which was Harald Hadrada, he also fought in that battle, but he was only about 15 years old. He fought on the side of the Christians, but they lost and he was no longer welcome in Norway and banned. Harald came back about 15-20 years later and he was crowned king. He had sympathy for the pagans and was definitely not as strict as his older brother was, um, but Harald was a great and fair ruler and he let the pagans uh, be free for the most part, even though his name actually, Hardrada, actually means stern or strict ruler, but he was still a great man and allowed freedom of religion for the most part in Norway. But Harald Hadrada was for sure Christian, even though, of course, he lived the Viking lifestyle 100%. Number two on the list, Svein Forkbeard, one of my favorite heroes of all time. Was he Christian? That's what the history books will say. He was baptized as a baby, his father, Harald Bluetooth, adopted Christianity and forced it upon everyone in Denmark. Uh, Svein actually became king of all England at one point, and they would have never allowed a pagan to become king of England. That being said, he was probably a pagan in secret. Uh, he had a pagan wife, He had a, which was a princess from Sweden. He aligned himself with all pagan chieftains, and he stood up against Christianity in some of the greatest battles we ever had in Scandinavia. Uh, first of all, just as a young man, he took control over Denmark and took it from his father, King Harald Bluetooth, and the country loved him so much because his father had forced this foreign religion on his people, but Svein Forkbeard took it back and gave the Danes their religious freedom again. 
Ryan also participated on the side of the pagans in the best battle we've ever had in the north, the Battle of Svolden, where every pagan force in Scandinavia came together and fought against the horrible Olav Tygvassen, who just tortured and killed anyone who didn't accept Christianity. Uh, Svein and the pagan chieftains actually adopted Christianity after this battle, but they did allow religious freedom for every person in Scandinavia. And then, of course, Svein Fortbeard raided England for many years in response to the killing of the Danes there, and eventually Svein uh, became king of all England and made sure that there was religious freedom there, and the Danes were protected. So, the number one Christian king, you probably have not heard of him, but he is by far the number one uh, not even debatable, that is Håkon the Good. Now, this guy's name says everything, the Good. He was a very good king of Norway. Only one other Viking was called Good, and that was the young king Mungnus, but he was a bit of a pussy. <laughs> Håkon the Good was a great and kind man, but he was also one of the most fearsome warriors we ever had. He was actually a son of Harald Fairhair, but he was fostered away in England and raised by the great king Athelstan there. And he was raised as a Christian in England as a boy, but eventually when he grew up, he returned to Norway and ended up stealing the throne back from his brother, Eric Bloodaxe. Hmm, I wonder who you would rather be ruled over by, someone named Bloodaxe or someone named the Good? <laughs> anyway, Håkon removed all the taxes that were claimed by his greedy father, Harald Fairhair, and he was loved in all Norway because of this. Hmm, look at that. A leader is loved because they lower taxes. I think our dumbasses today can learn something from that when we vote for politicians. Anyway, Håkon was not just a kind man and he paid his people well, but he was also a ferocious warrior and had a great mind for battle tactics. He was attacked in Norway many times by the sons of Eric Bloodex. Uh, aligning themselves with the Danish kings of the time. So Håkon and the Norwegians were seriously outnumbered in almost every battle they had, and they e didn't flee even when his men were telling him, begging him to flee, that he should save it for another day. But every time Håkon the Good stayed and fought the battle, fought the Danes off, and won every single battle. Probably the greatest skaldic poem we ever have from the Viking Age is all about Håkon and his victories and deeds. He was the most loved king we ever had uh, by far, I think. Uh, now, Håkon's religion is very interesting. He was absolutely raised Christian, and when he came to Norway and became king, he actually did spend many years trying to convert the pagans there, but he was he was very kind about it. He joined their feast and he joined pagan sacrifices and, you know, uh, accommodated their things and tried to really be a part and understand what they did. But by the end of his life, the sources kind of suggest that Håkon drifted towards paganism. And he was actually said to go to Valhalla, even though he was a Christian and he didn't even die in battle. He, he actually was wounded by an arrow in the arm and he died from illness uh, a little bit later. But he still went to Valhalla because he was such an honorable and brave warrior. So Håkon the Good is not only my number one favorite Christian Viking, but he's probably my top three or four favorite hero of all time in general. So. Hope you enjoyed that video, that just gives an idea of the, you know, uh, conversion and the attitude towards Christianity at the time. These people loved him and they took him as a king and there were many Christian kings that were not bad people. They were good and they were loved by the whole country uh, no matter what their religion was. So that's all I have to say for today. Hope you learned something. We say as nestegang.